This video will discuss the operators for which the particle in a ring wave functions are eigenfunctions and what those eigenvalues are. So we remind ourselves that in our particle in a ring model system, we have a particle which is free to travel in a fixed circular orbit in the xy plane. It does so at a radius of capital R and it does so in the xy plane. So the spherical polar angle theta is always equal to 90 degrees and the variable with which our particle can travel around in a circle is the spherical polar coordinate phi representing the angle to the plus x axis in the xy plane. Our Hamiltonian there was just the kinetic energy inside the ring which was minus h bar squared over 2 times mass of the particle times the radius of the ring squared times the second derivative with respect to the angle phi the energies of that system was equal to h bar squared n squared over 2 m r squared and our wave functions um, depending on some quantum number n were psi n of phi equals 1 over square root of 2 pi our normalization constant times the complex exponential e to the i n phi the allowed values of e uh, the allowed values of n here are 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 or any integer value Okay, so we have here that there's a double degeneracy in the energy for any particle or any state that's uh, not the n equals zero state because plus one squared and minus one squared give the same uh, total energy as, as is the case for every non-zero value. So what we're looking for here is how to distinguish the states where those energies are equal. So the two operators that we're going to use to distinguish all of our states with a set of quantum numbers, we're going to use our Hamiltonian and also the LZ operator, the angular momentum uh, around the Z axis, which is equal to minus I times H bar times the first derivative with respect to phi. Okay, so as I said, with the Hamiltonian, uh, that's going to give the Schrodinger equation. So the Hamiltonian acting on psi equals E times psi. The angular momentum operator acting on our wave functions, our wave functions are also an eigenfunction of that operator. So LZ acting on psi n equals h bar n psi n phi. So we noticed, as I mentioned there, that when the Hamiltonian, um, E of plus k and E of minus k are equal, so we need this LZ operator to help us to distinguish um, the states of plus and minus k. So the LZ operator acting on psi of k is equal to the opposite result of the LZ operator acting on psi minus k. So if we have, um, since the result is h bar n, if n is 1, we get h bar psi n. If it's minus 1, we get minus h bar psi n. So we can distinguish the plus k and minus k states by their angular momentum around the z-axis values. So effectively, um, whenever we're looking at this, one of them is traveling around the z-axis in one direction and the other is traveling around in the other. Okay, additionally, we have the special case that if we are in the ground state, n equals zero, LZ acting on psi zero is going to give us zero because e to the i zero phi is just e to the zero, which is one. So psi zero is just the normalization constant, one over the square root of two pi. So that means that our LZ operator acting on the ground state wave function is going to give zero as the eigenvalue because it's going to be h bar times zero. So there is no angular momentum in the ground state. It's not moving to the left or to the right. It's just a particle which is equally likely to be everywhere in the ring and doesn't have any uh, net motion. All right, and then for states that are not zero, we have psi plus k and psi minus k which are equal in magnitude for their total energy. Their kinetic energy is equal, but their momentum is in opposite directions. One is going clockwise and the other is going counterclockwise. So if we look at this pictorially at n equals zero, we have no net angular momentum. Our psi zero is proportional to a constant, no angular momentum. For plus or minus one, we have one that goes counterclockwise, one that goes clockwise plus h bar and minus h bar for their angular momentum around the z-axis. 
And then we have two, and then the next state, we have double the angular momentum, plus two h bar and minus two h bar. And that's gonna continue as we go up. The n equals three is gonna be three times faster than n equals one. N equals four will be four times faster. Our angular momentum is going up linearly as we go around, leading our kinetic energy to be going up quadratically. So that's the only distinction when we have these two degenerate states here. So that one is going to be a plane wave propagating around uh, counterclockwise, and one will be a plane wave which is propagating around clockwise according to their eigenvalues under the LZ operator.